Chromium is essential for energy metabolism, and in particular for glucose metabolism. Subclinical deficiencies of this trace element are quite widespread for a variety of concurring reasons. Absorption of inorganic chromium is very limited to begin with, at a rate of about 5%, and it decreases with age. Then, refined foods and overly processed foods are dramatically impoverished of chromium, while high sugar consumption increases chromium utilization and excretion. As it turns out, the average American diet combines all these things, and thus ends up bringing little chromium in, all the while increasing the need for it. Stress, strenuous exercise, and trauma further increase chromium losses. Chromium deficiency results in symptoms which are similar to those of type 2 diabetes, such as impaired glucose tolerance, fasting hyperglycemia, high insulin levels, and glucose excretion in the urine. Indeed, chromium appears to be required for insulin action, and it improves insulin sensitivity, although we still don't know the exact mechanism of its action. Chromium deficiency also results in risk of dyslipidemia, with elevated blood triglycerides and cholesterol, high blood pressure, body fat accumulation, and increased incidence of atherosclerotic plaques. The cardiovascular symptoms and the diabetes-like symptoms described before are all reversed by chromium supplementation in chromium-deficient individuals. But chromium is well known for its toxicity as well as its potential health benefits, reminding us one more time that we must never forget to look at the whole picture. In biological systems, chromium is present in many different valency states. The two most common are chromium-3 and chromium-6. While chromium-3 is beneficial and non-toxic, hexavalent chromium is extremely toxic. Under pro-oxidative conditions, however, chromium-3 can be oxidized to chromium-6, and this is the main reason why we have to be extremely careful with chromium supplementation. Indeed, Chromium supplements have been shown to improve dyslipidemia, blood glucose, and insulin sensitivity in some diabetes patients. They are also sometimes recommended to athletes to make up for their increased chromium losses. However, intensive chromium supplementation also raises concerns for its potential genotoxicity due to the generation of chromium-6. It is also possible that the beneficial effects of chromium are in fact a consequence of its very toxicity, based on the hormesis principle. Small doses of a toxic chemical may induce a sort of good stress, stimulating our cells to activate their own protection and repair mechanisms. After all, low doses of heavy metals such as mercury and cadmium have also been shown to induce stress-related increase in cell glucose uptake. And so maybe the anti-diabetic activity of chromium-3 is in fact due to its biological oxidation to chromium-6. The recommended daily allowance for chromium-3 is 35 micrograms for men and 25 micrograms for women, and no upper limit has been established. A very good source of chromium is brewer's yeast, because its chromium is bound to niacin and other amino acids, thus making it more easily absorbable, 10 to 25%. Because of the leftover yeast, beer is also rich in chromium. Broccoli is another excellent source of chromium. Fresh fruits and vegetables, mushrooms, whole grains, and nuts are also good sources, but of course their chromium content is highly variable, depending on the composition of the soil. As far as supplements go, the organic chromium picolinate is more efficiently absorbed, but it is also being questioned for its higher oxidative toxicity. Niacin-bound chromium is still well absorbed and is less toxic, so it appears to be the best choice. Absorption of inorganic chromium supplements is much less efficient. Brewer's yeast can also be used as a natural chromium supplement.